Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to start another cane. Uh, this time uh, it's going to be a panther. Right here. And really, really sharp. Looks very, very nice. It has the feral here. But I'm going to show you the steps that I take to mount the cane handle. Whichever one it is, um, there's probably a dozen of them that um, you, can, you can get. So, wrap this up so I don't want to drop it and bang it around. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different parts. This is the anchor for that panther. And this, which gets glued in, which I will show you in the, the cane, this is screwed on and what I do is I take this and screw it on there and then when I put it in the cane in the glue I make sure that this is setting just as perfect in that cane as it can be this is about a 7 8 diameter and the wood is one inch, just a hair over one inch, maybe a 64th, but it's just a little over one inch, but this is about seven eighths. So you have just a little bit around it that has to be sanded down. But let me get the camera set so I can show you a little bit better on, on how, everything, how everything sits and works. Okay, now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is this hole needs to be filled up half to three quarters of the way with uh, glue and of course we use the two part glue uh, this epoxy is uh, the GB weld I, I like it because it's clear so that's the only reason why I picked this is it's clear um, but it takes so much that I pour it in a little baggie like this, mix it up, set it off, cut the corner, and then I squeeze it down inside the, the hole. Uh, if there's not enough, then I fill it up again and hopefully can, can get it that way. Uh, a lot of times, I get a little bit bigger bags, but uh, this is the only size I've got right now, so I'm going to have to use it. So, now to get on with the, the coarse threads, of course, of coarse threads, of course, it's pretty good. We'll go in here. And then, but with this sitting on it, and then the ferrule sitting on top of that, put it in. Once you put the glue in, and I feel all the way around to kind of look and make sure it's as even as I can tell it is. And then I use painter's tape and go over it, which I will have a, a strip, two strips cut. And then it has to dry overnight because it's, there's a lot of glue in there. So we will get things set up to where I can squeeze the glue and get it going and Get the pieces of tape cut and, 
and we'll be right back at you. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get the epoxy in here. That might have been just a little bit too much, but we shall see. And then you can squish it around and get it all mixed up without having to make a mess and trying to figure out how to get it dumped in there. This is the best way I found. It uses a lot of epoxy, so be aware of that. Then I cut the corner off the bag, kind of like, I guess, cake decorating. <laughs> silly, silly mistake. I put way too much in. So now it's time for And you can really see where you're at and feel where you're at. doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but as close as you can get it, it is the best. Okay, and then I just take a strip and wrap it around here to make sure that the tape don't slide up. And I use painter's tape because it don't leave so much tacky buildup on the wood. Yeah, I think that's pretty good right there. And that uh, Epoxy is really quick, quick setting. Five minutes it says and it sets. But, um, I leave it set all night long. And I'm putting this on a piece of poplar. I'm back, I'm gonna do some more sanding on the, the panther stick here. I switched to black tape. I know on the, the first one I did, uh, the gator stick, I used painter's tape, the blue painter's tape. The problem is with the blue painter's tape, it really, it, it worked okay, but it's not as tough as the black electrical tape. Uh, so when I got close to that blue tape, it tore real quick where this here will actually sand down before it'll tear away. So what I'm going to do, set the camera down, 
get myself going and, and uh, do some more sanding. See what we can come up with today. So, be back with you in a bit. Okay, I had to switch up a little bit on my technique of sanding or whatever. Right now I'm using a small file. And what I'm doing is I'm going around very sharp, sharply on the edge, or sh slowly I should say. And I'm filing it until I see that my file is actually taking some of the black tape off. And I've got it in a vise so it's it's held pretty good. And actually, this is just a form of draw filing, like you would do on, on metal. to get it as close as you can the wood to the metal because it uh, there's going to be a little bit of filing left at the end without the tape so that's where it gets scary but I used to do draw filing on the barrels of rifles and shotguns when they were so rusty and pitted that just regular cleaning wouldn't do it. Alright, let's take a quick look around here. I did get close down here. I don't think I scratched the brass. Okay, well I'm gonna take the tape off see what I've got here I know I'm gonna have to do some more filing because of the thickness of the tape but I have to 
say, this is some good electrical tape, man. sanding left. Well, I got to turn the camera off. I got a whole bunch of, that's the problem with the black tape is it really leaves the sticky stuff, but it's actually better than I think than the other. So I have got to get a little thinner here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off. And when I get this clean, I'll come back and we'll see what we can do about the rest of the sanding. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently, lightly go over the end here with uh, 220 and uh, I believe with 320 very lightly and then keep trying the ferrule which was untouched so it's still pretty bright shiny, just don't want to drop it. But I'm going to go over this real gently, softly with three different grits and then uh, each time try the ferrule. So I'm going to bend this down a little bit and break, break this up.